I'm here to invite you to be faithful for your sake and for the generation that will come after you as we reflect on, on Joshua 15 to 19. Lord, we pray that you will teach us to be like Caleb who stays faithful and becomes a blessing to generations. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. One of the first points we want to look, look at in this, these chapters is that your choices impact generations. Chapters 15 to 19 describe the division of land in detail. Uh, Judah is the first tribe to receive its allotment in the promised land. And it plays an important role in the history of, of, of Israel, but also in the history of the church. The 12 tribes, uh, tribes of Israel, as we know, are descended from Jacob. Now, in this culture, the, the birth order is very important. Of course, Judah is not the first son. Reuben is the first son. And therefore, uh, the greater portion of the father's estate and, and I would, would go to him and would be the one who would become the, the next leader. But this does not happen because Reuben, the firstborn son, who should have led the tribe, uh, is eliminated from his rights of firstborn because he sleeps with his father's concubine. Uh, we read in Genesis 20, 20, 35, 22, while Israel lived in the land, Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Jacob, Heard of it. Now, nothing is said about this until we get to Genesis 49 when Jacob is described as, uh, 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 as a man on his deathbed and giving his final blessings to his sons. He tells Reuben that you are my firstborn, the, uh, the, the, my, my knight and the first fruits of my vigor, excelling in rank and in power, unstable as water. Uh, you shall no longer excel because you went and up into your father's bed. Then you defiled it. Now, Simeon and Levi are the second and third in line, but they too made very careless choices and they, they killed the men of Shechem because uh, she, they raped their, their sister and they killed that, that, that they, they deceived them and killed them. And because of that, they too did not get their, 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 their inheritance that they deserved. They should have been the next in line and Judah becomes the man who gets that inheritance of their firstborn. Now, I find that what is happening in the, between these children, Reuben and, 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 and Simeon and Levi and Judah is not worthy because, you know, the choices we you and I make are choices that not only impact us, are choices that impact generations. What Judah, as the way Judah made choices, becomes a blessing for not just for Judah, but for generations after him. Well, this truth is, of course, repeated in Scripture many times. Psalms uh, 1, 3, verse 17 says, But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's life is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children, his children. And uh, Proverbs uh, 13, 22 says, A good person leaves an inheritance for their, for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. The second thing that we see in these chapters is that it is a lesson for parents and church leaders to guide their children uh, to make godly decisions about marriage. Now, Caleb decides to give land to the man who attacks and captures Kiriath Sepa. The text says, Caleb said, I'll give my daughter Aksa in marriage to the man who attacks and captures Kiriath Sepa. Othiniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's brother, takes this challenge and so he is given the Aksa. Uh, as, uh, as a wife in marriage. Now, it seems to me that Caleb wanted to, the bravest and most responsible man in Judah to marry his daughter, not some wimp, but a leader, not a follower. He knew only the best, he, he knew only the best would think she's worth it, and he wanted the best man possible to marry his daughter, uh, who would be able to take care of her as well. Now, Othniel is Caleb's nephew, nephew, and so he steps forward to take this challenge, that I know that in our day, for many families, the choice of a of spouse is left to children. Now, Caleb teaches us that parents have a role in their guiding their children in their choice of a married partner. Now, in a Christian family, it is important that children grow up knowing the, the, the importance of marrying a God-fearing spouse. It is possible that Othiniel was in love with Aksa before her father made this proposal. It's also possible that Caleb was aware of it and looked favorably upon him. Uh, as a son-in-law, maybe Caleb decided to put Othniel to the test before finally committing himself. Now, Caleb was the chief of his tribe and his life was marked by faith and bravery as we have we read in the scriptures. Caleb was, uh, uh, Othniel shows the same characteristic as Caleb. 
uh, Caleb wants his daughter to be united to someone who's spiritual, who has spiritual muscle, and nothing is considered uh, considers it an honor to be that man. It is was worth his risk of leading a battle against the, uh, uh, the, these people. Now, we do not only want our girls uh, or our, uh, our daughters to be married to godly boys, but we want our boys to be married to godly women. The writer of Proverbs says in, in 31.30, that charm is decept uh, deceptive, fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. A godly woman is to be praised above the one who possesses a pretty face or a figure eight and all of those things. So whether you are dating uh, in, in the church or in the fellowship or you're dating online, uh, as you peruse the figures and physical features, please you need to understand the most important thing is that a person has a personal relationship with God. Uh, uh, you, you don't, don't just choose somebody because of their figure. Mothers and, and fathers of generations may not send their sons and daughters to to, to war, to prove their, their love for their children, as Caleb did, but we need to be involved in guiding our children to, to receive guidance as they go through our homes on their choices about marriage. Choice decisions about marriage should be part of our table discussions as we are living in the home, as we sit to, to, together for, for lunch or supper. It should be one of those choices or that discussions that will be on our tables. Now, we do know that uh, Caleb's uh, 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 do daughter ends up with a good man, uh, Othniel. In fact, he later on becomes a judge. We do know that probably Caleb, as, uh, as, 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 uh, as an uncle, his, uh, his, his uh, character rubs up, uh, uh, off on his son-in-law in because he becomes the, the judge for Israel uh, later on as we read in Judge chapter 3. Othniel stands out as a, 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 above the men of his day as a man who, who, who loves God, who is committed to God, who now becomes a judge, a takes on uh, the, 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 the king of Aram, and he, we're told that the nation, the country, or the, had uh, peace for the next uh, 40 years. The third thing we want to, to think about is ki kingdom people see girls as joint hairs in the in the earthly family as well you know caleb gives land to axa his daughter in a male dominated society uh she gets she gets off her, her donkey and asks for uh, says what do you want he says give me the land in the negev i uh, give me also the spring water uh and Kel Ke caleb gives her the upper and lower springs now this was in a in a in a, in a, in a society w which was male dominated but the, the daughter receives uh inheritance as well and and the other um, man who does honors women is eliezer who gives the daughter of zelo zelo of a had uh, uh land uh, an inheritance as well in africa most most families give land to the boys and very few do honor uh, girls with their family inheritance. They assume that they will get that in their, where they get married, but ha what happens if they don't get married? What happens if they get sent away from their home? And then they, the, one of the drivers of gender-based violence is this injustice to women. The fourth thing that we learn from this text is that kingdom people cannot hobnob with the world. We read in chapter 15, verse 63, in, in 16, 10, in 17, 12, that God's people did not completely drive out the inhabitants. They didn't drive out in, the, the Jebusites. They didn't drive out the Canaanites. And later on, this become a snare. It sounds crude. But let me tell you, first of all, God is sovereign. So he has a right to do what he wants. He can do what he pleases. We have no right to say to him, why do you do, uh, do that? Two, the Canaanites were not necessarily a very holy people. They too were guilty uh, of, of, of sin. They, 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 they sacrifice children. They, 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 they do all sorts of things. They, re, re, they rebelled against the principles of God, even though in their midst was Abraham and, and Isaac and the people that would have been a, a symbol of God's uh, principles. They, not, they were not necessarily a people that did not deserve judgment. Three, uh, Israel, too, had been judged many times by God, uh, including being uh, sent to the, 
to, 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 to being taken over by other nations in the desert itself. Many of them never made it through the desert because they were going through God's judgment for their sins. So just as they received judgment, uh, Israel, um, rather, the, 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 the men who lived in the land that God had given uh, to his people were men that were, were not necessarily uh, a, a people who didn't deserve judgment. They were men who deserved judgment as well. Finally, the destruction of the Canaanites was a pointer to the end when God, God will bring the final judgment on all who do not turn to him. When you consider the reality that there will be a final judgment, this drives us to tell others to be prepared, to tell others to come to repentance, to tell others to turn to Jesus where they can find their deliverance because God's judgment should draw us to find grace. In this section, we are reminded to be faithful like Caleb and Othniel for the sake of our children and our children's children. Let us guide the next generation in their choices of spouses and let us protect the welfare of girls and women that God has put in our circles of influence. Let's share in, uh, uh, then let's make sure they share in the inheritance in our communities. Let us be aware that God will punish sin. Let us look to him for every challenge in our lives. God bless you.